Hi everyone. Today what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, slope of a line in this video. So I'm going to show you a few examples uh, so that you can hopefully understand what slope, the word slope, means and how it's related to the slope of a line. Okay, so when we're looking at slope, okay, what we're doing is we're looking at the rise over the run of a straight line. So let's draw a set of axes here and draw a line. Okay, so that's our line. And let's say that right here we have that's negative 2 on our y axis. And this is, let's say, 3 on our x-axis. Okay, so what's the slope of this line? So basically what we're going to do is we're going to look at what's the path that I take, how many units up do I go from one point, from like let's say right here, how many units up do I go, and then how many units over do I go. So the up is called the rise and the over is called the run. So for this question I went up two units and to the right three units. So that gives me my slope of my rise is two units and my run was three units. Okay? So that means my slope of this line is 2 over 3. Okay, now notice that I went up 2, so I have actually a positive 2 over here, and my right was the 3, so I went over 3, and then I have a positive 3 there. Okay, let's look at a, another example. Okay, um, <clears throat> let's draw another set of axes. Okay. And another line. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to give each point a value. Now this is really poorly drawn, so pardon me. Uh, I'm just going to label this negative 2, negative 1. Okay. And this is 3, comma 1. So for... For this point right here, that means uh, my x value is negative 2, my y value is negative 1. Uh, right here, my x value is 3, and my y value is 1. Alright, so let's label this point A, and this is labeled point B. Okay, so let's try to find the slope of the line of AB. Okay, so now, again, I want you to notice that it's rise over run. So if I wanted to, <clears throat> I could very easily just take, find out, figure out what path I'm going to take from this point right here. How many up do I go? And then how many right do I go to get to here? Okay, so you can easily count that and figure it out from there. Um, or you could use the points that you're actually given. So let's use the points that are actually given to figure this out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call uh, one of them my first point and the other my second point. Okay, so let's label the A as the first point. So uh, let's generically just call it X1 and Y1. And then let's call my B my second point. So let's generically call it my X2 and my Y2. And you'll see why I did this in just a second. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to subtract my Y values from each other. And that's going to give me how high I go from one point to another. And then I'm going to subtract my X values from each other. And that's going to give me how across I go. So I'm going to figure out my run like that. Okay. 
I'm gonna say my slope. So here's the equation. So we've got slope equals uh, y2 minus y1 divided by my x2 uh, subtract my x1. Okay, so let's take these numbers, plug it in, and see what happens. So I've got my 1, and I'm going to subtract from that my negative 1. So you see that right here. There's my 1, there's my negative 1. Okay, and then I'm going to subtract my x values from each other. So I've got my 3, and I'm going to subtract from there my negative 2. So that's my 3, and that's my negative 2. Okay, so what do we end up getting? Uh, we end up getting 2 divided by 5. Okay, so from here you could see that 2, I go 2 units up. Every time I go 2 units up, what this means is every time I go 2 units up, so if I go 2 units up and then 5 over, I go 2 units up again and 5 over, that's where I'm going to end up. I'm going to end up at that point. That's the path that I take to get there. Alright, so this also is known as the rate of change. Okay? Okay, so now this example, you're going to notice that the line is going in a different direction, okay? So the last two examples that we've seen, the slope has been positive, and now this one, it's sloping downwards, per se. So we're going to end up with a negative slope. Uh, so let's actually take the numbers of these here and figure this slope out and verify that we're going to end up with a negative number. Okay, so y2 minus y1, okay, so we look at our y values, and it doesn't matter which one you pick to be your y2 as long as you choose the same point to have your x2. So if I'm going to choose this guy to be my y2, then this is going to be my x2, and also this will end up being my y1, and this is going to be my x1. Okay, so let's go. All right. So then we have my y2, I said was going to be 2. And my y1, I said was going to be my 0. And divided by, and then I have my x2, which was right here. So that's my negative 2. And my x1 is going to be my 3. So let's see what happens. Okay, so now I've got 2 on the top and negative 5 on the bottom. Okay, so we can equivalently write that as negative 2 over 5. So here we see that our line is slanting downward, so it's going that direction. And this turns out to be a negative slope. Okay. So just to remind ourselves of the different uh, slopes that we've seen so far, we've seen two with positive slope and one with a negative. Let's have a look at uh, just kind of all the different types of slopes that you could possibly get. So if I have, let me just draw a couple of these out here, okay, so we can talk about them a little bit and you could just get a general idea of what uh, we're looking at. See them all at the same time. <clears throat> okay, so the first example that we saw, we had our lines going in that direction. This is a positive slope, okay, because um, your direction of travel is up and to the right to get from this point to this point, okay? And if you notice, if you want to go the other direction, if you want to go down, that's going to be a negative value, and you're going to go 
to the left, that's going to be another negative value. And you, when you have a negative divided by a negative, you're going to end up with a positive anyway. So might as well go up and over and you'll keep things a little straighter. Ha ha, since we're talking about linear equations. Uh, okay, so let's look at an example of a negative slope. So this is what it looks like for a negative slope. So here you're going downhill. You're going downhill skiing, almost, you could think of. That'll, that's what helps me remember it. I'll oh, change the pen here so we've got a negative slope. And uh, we take the path going, uh, let's say we're always talking about a rise over run, right? So if we go from here to here, we go down, so that's a negative value, and we go to the right, and that's a positive value, which is going to give us a negative number. All right, so now let's look at a couple of weird situations here. This, a line that goes straight across, so for example, if this point was labeled as negative 4, comma, um, uh, 3, and this point here uh, could be labeled 3, comma, 3, what do you notice about the values of the y here? We've got a here we've got a 3 and we've got a 3. So what's going to happen in our formula of slope? Well, we're going to have 3 minus 3 over uh, 3 minus negative 4. And what ends up happening on the top? You end up with a 0. So this gives us, and it doesn't really matter what number ends up in the denominator. Uh, in this case, we end up with a 7. So this gives us a slope of 0. So slope equals zero. All right, <clears throat> okay, and then finally, we're gonna talk about another interesting situation here. This is a, uh, let's pick a fun little color. Here's purple, I haven't used purple before. Okay, so this would be uh, something catastrophic if you're actually going um, skiing, right? So you, you don't mind going uphill skiing here. So this is uphill skiing. This would be your downhill ski. This would be your cross-country ski. And uh, this would be a rather dangerous path to ski. All right, so let's label these points here and look what happens. Uh, so, whoops, okay. So if I label that point, uh, let's say 3 comma 5, and this one 3 comma negative 2, uh, you notice here your x values are exactly the same. So what's going to happen in our formula for slope? Well, we're going to end up with, so we've got y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. What's going to happen if my values of x are exactly the same? What's going to end up in the denominator? We're going to have a divide by zero situation. And as you know in math, that's a very bad thing, right? Okay, so you're going to have, let's see, 5 minus negative 2 on the top here, and that's going to give us 7 over 0. Okay, so this slope we call undefined. All right, hope you enjoyed that. See you next time.